Today we will be discussing predicting products. We're able to predict products or any missing components of an equation based off of our compound forming rules that we learned last semester, as well as the law of conservation of mass. Since we know of these two things, we don't actually need a complete equation to get the full picture of what's going to happen and what will form. We can go ahead and fill in those blanks ourselves. So we're gonna look at this example equation first. And I have potassium being added to sulfur and I'm going to form something, but I do not know what I'm going to form. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and kind of lay out what steps we would take and then we'll actually follow them. So our first step is to identify all of the elements that are gonna be present. And that is because I need to know what exactly needs to be on the other side? What am I missing? Step two, I'm going to identify the type of reaction. This will help me identify the pattern. And then I'm gonna be using that reaction type to inform the type of molecule missing. So if I know that this is a combustion reaction, then I know that I'm going to have a particular set of things that must be present. Step four, I'm gonna go ahead and create that missing compound using my formula writing rules. So I'll make sure that that uh, compound appears appropriately. And step five, I'm gonna go ahead and balance the actual equation. So let's go ahead and actually get this started for this equation. I'm gonna just rewrite it so that I have some room to work here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with step one. Step one was to identify all of the elements present. So I have potassium and sulfur present. And then I need to identify the type of reaction. And I've identified this as a synthesis reaction because I have two singular elements and then I only have one space identified for a product that could be made, which means I will go from element to molecule. So that matches my synthesis pattern. Then I am going to use my reaction type to inform the molecule missing, and that is going to be a compound with potassium and sulfur bonded. And then I'm gonna actually go ahead and create that compound using formula writing rules. So potassium and sulfur, this is going to be an ionic compound, so that means I need to look at charges. Potassium is in column one, which means it has one valence electron, so it's gonna have a charge of positive one. Sulfur is in column six, which means it has six valence electrons, so it's going to have a charge of negative two. And then I will go ahead and switch uh, charges for subscripts to come up with my actual compound formula, so K2S. And then I can go ahead and add it in to the equation and balance it. Now I didn't actually show balancing this because you should already know how to balance a equation. If you don't, go ahead and watch a video about balancing equations, but I've gone ahead and just done step five, which was to balance my final equation and I'm good to go. This is my new product and these are gonna be my coefficients that I need to make this equation follow the law of conservation of mass. So we're gonna do this one more time and I am going to look at this instead. So I have magnesium being added to aluminum chloride and I know I'm going to be producing two products. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to identify what I have here. I have magnesium, aluminum, and chlorine that means in some new arrangement on the right hand side, I need to make sure that magnesium, aluminum, and chlorine are involved here. Step two, I'm gonna go ahead and identify the type of reaction. This is going to be a single replacement reaction. I know this because I have a single element added to a compound producing two products, and that generally follows the pattern of a single replacement. So I'm gonna identify this as a single replacement. And that means that I can follow that pattern to realize that aluminum is the one that is going to be kicked off of the compound and it will be replaced with magnesium. And I know this because aluminum and magnesium are both metals, they will form cations, which means that since like has to replace like, 
magnesium is going to take aluminum's place. And then I can go ahead and start working that out. Since aluminum is just elemental aluminum, I don't need to worry about finding the compound uh, formula. So I just went ahead and started with uh, the magnesium and the chlorine. So magnesium metal is in column two, which means it has two valence electrons. So it's gonna have a positive two charge. Chlorine being in column seven has seven valence electrons, meaning it will steal one electron to get to eight. So it's going to have a negative one charge. When I write down that formula, I'm going to exchange charges for subscripts. So my formula for the magnesium chloride molecule will be MgCl2. And then I can go ahead and add it into my final equation and balance it. So what I've done here is I have added in the, that aluminum metal, which again, remember I told you we didn't need to worry about charges or anything because I knew it was gonna be single and therefore not have any charge or anybody else with it. And then I just went ahead and I added that magnesium chloride. And again, I balanced it with appropriate coefficients and I did not show this step because you should know how to do this step. And yeah. The very last thing that I need to introduce y'all to is something that we like to call Brinkelhoff. So Brinkelhoff stands for bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. And what Brinkelhoff is are all of my diatomic, di means two, so diatomic two atomed molecules that are gonna form. So if I have bromine and it's gonna be the one that's kicked off, it will form Br2 rather than just Br. Same with iodine, all of these are going to be my diatomics. It's why I've gone ahead and put that subscript of two with all of them. They're all going to want to at least be bonded with one other version of themselves if we kick them off of a molecule. And this is important so that you can write that formula correctly and so that you can, of course, balance correctly.